Well, America's largest meal, one week away. Preach. And with big feast comes big so food ready. safety responsibilities. The USDA sharing food safety tips on how to avoid foodborne illnesses this Thanksgiving. Joining us to share more is Kenneth, who is with the USDA. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. Course, yeah. Let's start off with this question, okay? We've had the feast, right? We've eaten, our bellies are full. How do we safely store the leftovers that we're going to have? That's a great question. And the leftovers are my favorite part of Thanksgiving. Um, so when it comes to leftovers, you can uh, store them in small, shallow containers, which is what we recommend. This will allow for more even and safe cooling. And your Thanksgiving leftovers will be safe in the refrigerator for up to four days. After that four day mark, that's when bacteria begins to grow inside of the food. And if you do have anything after that, we recommend being safe and discarding any uh, remaining food that's there. Okay, yeah. yeah, great yeah. tip. Mm -hmm. We hear you have four steps to food safety. What are those, Kenneth? Yeah, so the four steps to food safety will go a long way to uh, make sure your Thanksgiving and any other time you're handling food is safe. And those are clean, separate, cook, and chill. So I'll just run through those uh, briefly for you. So by clean, we mean to make sure we're always washing our hands with soapy water for at least 20 seconds before, during, and after food preparation. Next is separate. And this is simply making sure we're keeping our raw meat and poultry separate from our fruits and vegetables to avoid cross-contamination. The third step is cook. And this is to make sure that you're using a food thermometer to make sure your food has reached a safe internal temperature. So for example, that Thanksgiving turkey, we need to check it um, in three locations because it's such a big bird. And that's the thickest part of the breast, thickest part of the wing, and the innermost part of the thigh. And that needs to reach a safe internal temperature of 165 degrees before it's fully cooked. And the last step is chill. And chill simply means to make sure that any food that's sitting out beyond two hours is placed back in the refrigerator. Okay. okay. Yeah, those are some great tips. Absolutely. There. And that's good to know, too, because, you know, as you're, you know, feeding people, especially if you have a lot of people in your house, the food is out and you may forget about it because you're eating and that's you're right. entertaining and doing other things. So kind of just be aware of that two hour mark. Yeah, I love that. Speaking of hours, I I'm curious about time here. How long does it take, Kenneth, to thaw mm. a turkey? That's a great question. So when it comes to thawing a turkey, um, it, so if you have a, let's say, a five pound, four pound turkey, that will take 24 hours to thaw. So for every five pounds, it's going to be 24 hours. So if you have a five pound turkey you got from the grocery store, you place it in the refrigerator to thaw before Thanksgiving, the day before, the next day it'll be ready to cook. Now we also have, besides the refrigerator thawing method, we have the cold water thawing method. And this is um, simply submerging the turkey under water, perhaps in your sink, for example. And being sure to change out your water every 30 minutes until that turkey has thawed. And with this method, it must be cooked immediately because it's sitting outside of the refrigerator. Sure, okay, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. And yeah. that kind of leads into the next question we have here. How do you know when your turkey is ready to eat? Right, that's a great question. And, um, you know, that turkey could be smelling good. Our stomachs are growling. We see the skin has browned. However... We don't know if it's fully cooked and it could be quite raw in certain areas on the inside of the turkey. So that's when we need to use our food thermometer and insert it into the thickest uh, innermost part of the, the wing, breast and thigh until it has reached 165 degrees in each of those locations. And then it will be safe to eat. Okay, sure. 165. Now, Candace, when we're using that food thermometer, how far in do we need to go? That's a really good question. So with the food thermometer, you need to insert it all the way into those three locations. as um, So the probe is getting into the center of the breast, the center of the wing, and the center of the thigh. So it needs to go all the way in there until it has reached that location. After you've measured one spot, there's no need to change thermometers because it's, it's all the same um, food you're checking. So you can just take it out of the breast, for example, and go straight into the innermost part of the thigh and then into the innermost part of the wing until it's reached 165. Great. Kenneth, thank you so much for joining us today. Head over to the USDA's uh, website for all the food safety tips. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Let's